So what does that tiny little hole in the nose of an F1 car actually do? Until today, I hadn't fully considered it, but after some research, it turns out that it does have a desired purpose. But the question is, are the teams all using it for that desired purpose? So let's get into one of those tiny little features of a Formula One car that can really make a difference. First thing to know is that it's mandated in the regulations, and this hole is supposedly for driver cooling, but that's not why it came about. Under the regulations, this hole is for driver cooling purposes. Now, the reason they had to put that into the regulations, if you can remember back to sort of 2007, 2008, teams were starting to create these ducted nodes where Ferrari had a big hole passing through the nodes where the airflow from the front wing came up, almost like an S duct. And the regulation said, no, you can't have that. So they changed the rules. But in order to keep some airflow passing inside the nose, they allowed this nose hole. And yes, certainly it is there. It will let airflow in. If you think it's at the stagnation point at the front of the nose tip, that's where the air hits the nose and can't decide whether to go up, down, left, right, which direction. So it's one of the most powerful areas to grab airflow. It turns out it is for driver cooling, but as you can imagine, it serves an aerodynamic purpose too. The nose is a potential stagnation point for airflow, a large area where the air doesn't really know which way to go. So it's one of the most powerful areas to grab airflow. So you'll get a lot of flow passing through despite the hole's very small dimensions. Of course, nothing in Formula One has a simple purpose, but we'll get to that. The cooling is important though. The cockpit can get really, really hot. A load of electronics wrapped all around the driver, as well as a big hot power steering rack at the driver's feet. So the air from the nose is often ducted there and it will have a cooling effect. Then you also lose the stagnation point, which can be very draggy. You kind of get this cooling airflow for free. But there's some evidence to suggest that this isn't just the driver cooling hole. And the evidence is, for example, Mercedes, when they uh, were running their car in hot weather, they have little NACA ducts, you know, those little curved triangular ducts. Either it used to be inside of the car, but now it's actually that little removable panel at the top. So if they've got a duct in the top of the car bringing cooling air in, then what's the driver cooling hole for? So I think we have to look at exactly what teams uh, are doing in this area. And really, I think this is all just very sort of subtle aerodynamics. It's like teeny tiny gains. Really, they're using this air to cool this bit, but mainly improve the stagnation point. But that doesn't mean it can't be used for subtle things later down the car. Equally, having some air pressure entering the, the entire cockpit area through the nose helps just balance the airflow uh, from high pressure above and low pressure within the cockpit, which prevents the driver's head lifting slightly and also some of the turbulence around the cockpit opening, which is a problem because that affects airflow over the engine cover to the rear wing. I don't think any team have really done anything super clever with the cooling hole. We've seen lots of people with concepts around is it being ducted under the floor to create downforce and bits and pieces like that. Probably the only true function we've ever seen of that is when Mercedes had their front DRS set up, which was oddly operated by the rear wing DRS opening, ducts passed through the nose, uh, fluid switches and bits and pieces. That you know, really was the most extreme. And I don't think uh, anyone's done anything even close to as extreme as that. But really, it's nothing particularly clever. Don't go looking for any conspiracy theories as to what teams are doing. It is really just an aerodynamic aid and gives you a little bit of cooling. This airflow is certainly useful, but what's cool about that is that some teams do cool things with this inlet, like Aston Martin has used the classic Aston shape grill, and Williams 3D printed a little grill to go in there with the Williams logo on it. The little touches, right? You should check out this video about Red Bull and Ferrari using their floor skates to stop their bouncing issues. Thanks for watching, and thanks to Masterworks for sponsoring this video, and I'll catch you in the next one.